a lot of actors don't do their own stunts. They say mm-hmm. they do, but okay, so it's all press. It's all it's all hype. Yeah. Welcome to Create Up with Will Ennis. That's me. This is a podcast on leveling up both creatively and in life. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 19 of Create Up with Will Ennis. I'm coming to you live from a bedroom right now. I am socially isolating because I got the COVID and I am treating myself with some vitamin D and a Netflix subscription. It's basically like a light cold. Today, I bring to you my talk with Margarita Soldatova. She's a stunt actor, and I wanted to give stunt acting some shine on this episode because I've been watching some action films and all of these stars are getting all the glory, but it is really the stunt performers that are risking it all, humbly so, so these stories can be told. So Margarita is awesome. She's been in tons of TV and film, some notable ones being Jupiter's Legacy. She's the stunt double for Ruby Red, Supergirl. She's also in a film called Nobody, where she does her stunts and acts in it as well. So we talk about a lot. We talk about the stunt industry. We talk about her background as a figure skater, and we even talk about her pet pigs. So without further ado, I bring to you my talk with Margarita Soldatova. Uh, Margarita, thank you so much for being here. Um, it, it's an honor to be to be talking with a, a stunt performer as as accomplished as yourself. How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm I'm a little nervous. It's been a while actually since I've done any interviews. I took a little hiatus this summer, so you're one of the you're like the fourth interview I've launched into. But I really thought about off of the last season who I wanted to talk to, and I'm always going for diverse life experiences. Mm-hmm. And I've known a couple stunt performers in my life, like in the periphery, just someone I'd meet at a party here or there. I've never gotten to sit down over Zoom or wherever and kind of know like the ins and outs of the business. Mm -hmm. And because I I assume it's like, it's like that ultimate like art mixed with athleticism. And, And I was curious, like, how did you find your way into this career path? Mm hmm. Um, so for me, when I moved to Canada, I started as a model. So that was kind of how I started. And then that slowly became acting. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so my athletic background, I'm a figure skater. I used to be in a national figure skating team back home in Ukraine. Oh, wow. And, um, so that's where my athleticism comes from. And then um, when I moved to Canada, I was just getting bored of just going to the gym and skating and stuff. So I started going to a gym, gymnastics gym. And a lot of people who were going there were stunt performers. And I knew nothing about the the job. I knew nothing, (laughs) basically. (laughs) And I didn't even know those people existed, to be honest. I always thought just actors happen to know how to fight and happen to know how to fall and mm-hmm. be set on fire and stuff. So um, <laughs> have you been set on fire? <laughs> no, I haven't done fire yet. No, my husband has, but uh, I haven't That's yet. Amazing. Do you need a special yeah. training for that if you get on fire? Um, yeah, sort of. It, it's it's kind of you have to just be very calm and know how to calm yourself down. Just like when you do cold water stunts or mm-hmm. heights. Um, that's one of those. You just got to know how to talk to yourself <laughs> and <laughs> to calm yourself down. And obviously there are technical aspects to it as well, how to yeah. behave, what to do, what not to do. And, you know, there's a gel that they apply on you. And obviously that saves your but do life. You need to be certified, for example, for a stunt like that, would you need to be, I'd be certified or can you walk into stunts and say, I'm confident you're going to teach me the techniques you need for this scene and let's go. Like, mm. how, how does that work? It depends. So for cars and motorcycles, stuff like that, something specific, yes, you do have to have background. They're not just going to be called Margarita and be like, hey, like, can you jump on this motorcycle and do this insane stunt? And I have no background in it. I obviously as myself as a stunt performer and as a person who values life, I'm going to say no, (laughs) I do not have the experience. I don't have the skill, the certification for it. And also stunt coordinators will not hire someone they don't really know 
or mm-hmm. because it also makes them look bad if the performer sucks or you know fails the stunt or whatnot it's yeah. obviously going to reflect on them because they're the ones hiring the person for the job totally and i didn't think about that but you can fail technically someone can fail the stunt on set oh, like, absolutely yeah would, would that be just uh it's they get psyched out by it or they just physically can't execute there, there can be a lot of different things so for instance it goes from a big stunt like a car chase scene where you know things are being ex- like explosions and the car is flipping and stuff um obviously when you're dealing with a machine there's also not just you there's also the machine and usually for stunts they use old cars so you know that that's technical stuff and it also can be as easy as just you know a, a fight scene and um or doing a fall and some people just yeah you can just freak out and you know, not hear the directions well, or you don't know where the camera is and you don't know how to sell it properly. The timing yeah. is everything. Oh, that's uh, the thing is it's acting too, right? It's so it could even be a smaller thing. You're, like you're saying, it could be a fall down the stairs and yeah. maybe not even the, 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 you're not getting hurt by it, but it's just not looking believable. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of acting. You need to know how to act angry. You need to know how to act scared, how to act pain. That's that's number one. (laughs) Um, You know, if you get punched, like how will it, you know, not necessarily like what parts of your body will hurt? How will your body react if you get punched in the stomach? It's a universal reaction, right? Like if, if, if we get hit, yeah. And everyone, but you're faking it. So you have to like sell it. You have so. to sell it, but not exaggerate it, but still make it look big enough for camera. It's just because camera has a tendency of making things look small. Wow. And you have to exaggerate, but not too much. So mm-hmm. there, it obviously comes with experience and training. So you learn and also ang- camera angles from this angle. Maybe this punch won't sell. It'll look like I actually did not punch you, right? There's a gap. Yeah. Yeah. And from this angle, if I do the same motion, then it will sell, right? And it's also choreography. It's like a dance. So yeah. I am, let's say I am the one attacking, you are the one reacting. But yeah. if my attack looks good, but your reaction looks bad, then in as a whole picture, it will look like shit. Like it'll oh, look bad. Right. Yeah. Because if you don't know how to react, it doesn't matter how well I can punch or kick or whatever else. If you are not showing the re- the proper reaction, the scene won't look good. Oh yeah. So I mean, you could throw why... a yeah yeah. Sorry, I mm-hmm. interrupted you. <laughs> yeah. No. No. No worries. So that's why it is important who you, who your dance partner is. Completely. And you know, for the stunt coordinator. Um, to find proper talent for the job so that they don't freak out. So they know the timing, they know being under pressure. That's another thing, huge thing in stunt industry. Um, Because most of the time they, you know, I, for myself as a female, I end up doubling actresses. So, um, you know, the scene never just starts with a fight. There's always acting. You did this, that, 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 right? Like there's always some <laughs> some sort of drama. And then the scene begins and then the fight begins, for instance, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so they will shoot all the acting in the beginning. Most of the time, I'm talking about like 90% of the time, they'll shoot yeah. acting in the beginning and then stunts will get half an hour and they got to wrap the location. They're like, go, go, go. It's we're going to be on overtime. So we have to do this in half an hour. And there's this massive fight scene. So as a stunt performer, you have to be able to be under pressure because there is no time to mess up. Yeah. And you have to deliver. And when everybody's screaming, hair is pulling your wig or whatever, fixing your hair, then (laughs) makeup comes in and does this. And then the stunt coordinator says, okay, so on this, we're going to cut this beat. And they constantly change the choreography on the day. Oh, wow. So how how much time do you have to choreograph? How much time do you have to choreograph before you step in usually? It it all depends. Usually if there is, let's say, one or two fight scenes on the day or stunts, uh, like a wire stunt and stuff, you usually just get one rehearsal. And that could be like six hours, eight hours, up to 10 hours, I would say. That was 
the most wow. that I've gotten. And then sometimes you don't get any rehearsal as well. Wow. And during that time, um, the past few years, they started also doing previs, which is um, basically you have to record the scene as it will play out on the day mm-hmm. so that uh, the stunt coordinator can show it to the um, camera operator on the day and they mm-hmm. can use that as a draft kind of. Like. Oh, nice. So it's sort yeah. of organized and it's also kind of safe. You can see how it's going to play out. Yeah, exactly. So this will be an actor shot. This will be our stunt double. This will be this. This will be that. So it's kind of um, like a map that they're mm-hmm. preparing during the rehearsal as well. And then obviously when you show up on the day, uh, things constantly change because of the yep. location, because of your costume, because of the time. That's the biggest thing. They're like, okay, we have this two minute fight. Now we have to make it 20 seconds and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so that happens so often and you have to make it work, right? And this sun court, everybody yeah. has this insane panic mode and you just gotta you know learn how to calm yourself down and be on listen and deliver yeah and and it's and it's wow that ability to be under pressure and to calm yourself down would you say that is that is the core skill like everything builds out of that in your line of work and ability to get yourself mentally centered and listening as well and taking directions, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 sure, yeah. sure. Taking directions, yeah, that's a big thing. Mm-hmm. So much, so much, just like an actor, but with the way higher stakes of, you know, worst case scenario, you you could you know die in some situations. Oh yeah. And in other cases, I'm sure, I'm sure you get injuries from time to time, or people in your line of work get broken. Yeah. Everything. I would. I would yeah, think. broken bones and torn ligaments and stuff. There are lots of bad incidents, and a lot of it happens because you're being rushed. Mm. And a lot of the scenes, as I said, are being filmed at the end of the day, so everybody's exhausted. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, yeah, it just happens. And obviously, it is also part of the part of the job, right? Totally, incidents totally. happen. So yeah. Um. Do you think it it helped being a pro figure skater coming into this line of work? Did it was there was there any connection there? Yeah, certainly. Being under pressure, um, that certainly came from being under pressure when I was a kid. Yeah. And coaches and your parents and you know everybody ex- expecting things of you. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the modeling is interesting. I didn't know that you did. Uh, did the modeling before. Mm-hmm. And that's interesting because, you know, you're doubling for a lot of the lead, you know, females that have sort of, yeah. you know, model, model, good looks and stuff. Mm-hmm. Do, do you have any urge to be like, you know, Angelina Jolie, she does her own stunts, in some of her movies and, and she's doing all, do you want to be like an action star? Uh, well, that's an interesting thought. A lot of actors don't do their own stunts. They say mm-hmm. they do, but Ah, ah, okay. So it's all press. It's all, it's all hype. Yeah. It's, it's not true. <laughs> okay. Some of them do, and they break it down into, you know, the choreography will be 20 beats and the actor will do just one and they'll just film a close up of them doing it. So you oh, don't wow. actually see them doing it. Is so, there an actor who is, who is about that life, who is a good, like a really good stunt actor in your, in your mind, who would be the best? Oh, uh, well, obviously the top one is uh, Tom Cruise. Like he yeah. is actual legit committed person. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the one mm-hmm. where he's holding onto the side of a plane? Yeah. Yeah. I saw that one. He, yeah, he's, yeah. That, would that be easy in a sense? This is so, I don't know what I'm talking about, but would that mm-hmm. be easy? Because he's harnessed in, isn't he? He's just kind of yeah. harnessed to this plane. Yeah. But I guess course. the psychologically, that would be kind of terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if things go wrong, then obviously game over the light yeah game over so well who knows tom cruise is pretty strong maybe he just like sprained an angle he falls like forty thousand feet you know, just whatever <laughs> 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 yeah but no but even himself he also has a stunt double who does all the painful stunts just like yeah. big from like flying from explosions big wire uh, pools which are called ratchets and you know big falls and stair falls and you know the painful stuff actors don't do them yeah yeah 
And you were saying like cold water is a thing. Like, mm-hmm. uh, do you find yourself like in productions where you have to be in like frigid ass water? I did. Uh, I did twice actually. Um, yeah, it was really cold. <laughs> 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 the first one I did that was in Toronto and um, it was January. And Holy as you know, it's, it's freezing. It's freezing. And Lake Ontario? They, yeah. And we were shooting for nine hours. It was insane. It was so cold. I was with another girl. Well, yeah, you do, but it's, you do, but it's, it doesn't do much to you, you know? Yeah. 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 (laughs) It's just, you kind of, okay, breathe and go. (laughs) It's just, it does, it does not, you know? You're freezing your ass off. They're like, do you want a coffee? You're like, this doesn't help at all. This does not help at all. And uh, I was with a girl and she ended up having a frostbite on her toes. Like oh, her, all of her toes went white. Yeah. And it was bad and she couldn't. Yeah. It was, it was really bad. Did she finish um, out the whole day? No, no, she didn't. They wrapped her. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. She Did her toes home. heal? I, I didn't actually talk to her after, but I hope they did. I hope they did because she was a beautiful girl. So I, I really hope they did. Oh my God. But it was yeah. insane. Yeah, it's certainly you need conditioning. And mm. the other one I did that was just recent in March here in Vancouver, and that was in swimming in the ocean. Um, wow. That was really cold as well. I ended up getting sick after, but um it was cold. It was really sick, cold. like having a cold for like a week or, or was yeah, it that kind of sick? Yeah, like fever. Yeah. Fever wow. and cough and stuff. Cause it was just the first time. So we did two takes. The first take, I was totally fine. It was maybe in the water for two minutes or so. Yeah. Um, and it was during the day. And luckily it was a sunny day, even though it was cold, but it was at least the sun kind of mentally helps you mm-hmm. <laughs> to mm-hmm. stay more positive. <laughs> and uh, so that was fine. And then they were shooting all the acting beats. And then later in the evening at 6, 6 or 7 p.m., I had to go back in. And I stayed in the water for about four minutes. And that was just horrible. Man. Like you can feel your body just going. Yeah. Like you can't, you're like, okay, I, I think I'm, I'm just, just, I'm wrapped. <laughs> like I'm done. <laughs> and then it was just so interesting. Another observation that you think your, your mind thinks your body is still okay. And then you go, you try not actually, you know, swim to the dock and it was, there was no stairs. So I had to like pull myself up. Oh my God. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, the coordinator was like, Hey, like I'll, I'll pull you up. And I was like, no, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. I got this. And I start pulling myself up and I like, that's it. My, all of my muscles are just gone and I just go under the dock and then the water safety. So they always will have water safety, right? Just to make sure that you're okay. And they're obviously wearing the proper gear and, you know. So they jumped in, they had to jump in the stadium. Yeah, and they like pulled me, pulled me out. (laughs) I'm like, you're okay. And then they right away, like gave us um, blankets and, you know, the, heat and hot water and stuff so that's amazing like the cold water thing mm-hmm. you know people athletes do like the ice the ice baths but they might do four minutes total but it sounds like you'll yeah. be out there you're doing stuff that like people have to work up to like a cold i did a cold plunge uh okay. last week at a spa you know with my girlfriend or whatever and okay. uh it was like it wasn't that cold you know but for us it was cold but i'm thinking you know, even like an ice bath, I'm like, oh, there's no way I could do this. But you basically will like live in an ice bath for a shoot day, a whole shoot day. Yeah. Yeah. That's intense. That is intense. It's intense. And there's obviously some training. Figure skating helped <clears throat> me a lot. And mm-hmm. also I used to teach skating too. So being exposed to cold temperature, um, you know, help me, even though yeah. I was wearing, you know, sweaters and sweatpants and <laughs> totally, socks totally. and stuff. So it wasn't as bad, but it just kind of mentally prepares you and teaches you how to breathe through things. Mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. um, I think even, even just in stuns in general, whenever you have to do a fall and, you know, most of the time you're hitting concrete, you're hitting the real, the real stuff. And, it hurts, but you just, you learn to breathe through pain and let help 
kind of guide it out of your body. Wow. So, mm-hmm. And before stunts, were you the kind of person that would sort of um, live a rough and tumble life? Like I know you were a figure skater, you know, you can do your, you can spin in the air and fall and all this, mm-hmm. but like, this seems like uh, level 10. Like, do you, were you someone that would, you know, take a lot of chances? Were you someone that would often play sports and get injured? Like, was, or is this, this sort of like the life you found yourself kind of evolve into? Um, yeah, it was, it's interesting. I'm actually not an adrenaline junkie and I am not a person who loves physical contact. Like, you know, from (laughs) rugby, playing rugby or like hockey or stuff like that. No, I'm a gentle flower. So (laughs) you know, who happened to be doing figure skating since she was three years old. And obviously that conditioned my body. So Mm -hmm. I don't take pain as a regular person would just because I'm used to falling on my ass since I was a baby. Right. And not feeling my tailbone and not feeling my elbow for a week and just but that being part of my life and yeah. obviously I didn't like it, but in figure skating, it was more about, you know, the graceful and yep. the pretty <laughs> stuff. Right. So I, I am that type of a person sure. graceful and this and that who has that other side who can take some beating, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so this job, like, honestly, it just happened. Yeah. To me, I never seeked per se, because I know a lot of people uh, who are stunt performer, working stunt performer, performers, and they actually wanted it since they were kids. They saw yeah. Jackie Chan movies and they saw, you know, some cool action stuff. And they're like, I want to be that. And that's what they they pursued. For me, it was not like that. I just yeah. happened to go to a gymnastics gym and happened to meet all these stunt performers and I was doing acting and they're like, well, you're, you're pretty athletic. You should give it a shot. And then I did. And then it just started happening. And would you say you found your calling? Have you found your calling with it? Or is this, this is maybe where you are now and you're, you're looking to move into another field. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. So the second one, Mm -hmm. I think it is just kind of a stage in my life. I can't see, I can't see myself doing it forever, Mm -hmm. um, but I certainly love it at the moment, but I'm always open to other things because honestly, growing up, I I never knew who I wanted to become. And I just knew I never wanted to be a figure skating teacher and an accountant. I ended up being a figure skating teacher and I do have a degree in accounting and finance. Uh, but <laughs> so things I did not want <laughs> did happen. <laughs> oh. And, um, I just kind of go with the flow, I guess, in yeah. my life and just whatever happens and any other talents and, um, things that I see are, you know, evolving inside of me. I just, sure. I just, I just go with it. Hey, you're listening to the Create Up podcast. If you're enjoying the conversation, please like and share it with your friends. Rate us on Apple, iTunes, and all those platform thingies that you do that on. And follow us on Instagram at Create Up Podcast. Um, Could you talk about Jupiter's Legacy? That's uh, a Netflix yeah. program you're on. Um, mm-hmm. You're oh, is her name um, Ruby Ruby Red? Is that no? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. yeah Ruby, that's the character. Yeah. yeah. You're... yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's only a couple episodes that I've seen so far. Um, Mm -hmm. I haven't seen them all, but is, is this, it seems like a really big opportunity. Is this like one of your biggest opportunities right now or, um, yeah, that one. And also I did a movie in that was shooting in Winnipeg. Uh, nobody, that was another, I had a stunt actor role that Mm -hmm. I would say also was one of the biggest because they're high profile or because you're getting to do a lot of stunts I guess high profile it was just it was a Hollywood it is a Hollywood movie uh you know the the producers from uh Atomic Blonde and um oh my god I forgot um uh, Keanu Reeves was the movie called John Wick John Wick yeah yeah John Wick Nice. Um, so that was, those were the producers and writers. So that was just, 
amazing to be with a crew like that. I'll have to check it out. Um, mm-hmm. cause John, John wick is like maybe one of the best action films, that whole series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you, then you love that movie. Yeah. And it's a story about American family guy and he, you know, happened to mess with some Russian mobsters and I'm yeah. playing one of the mobsters. So it was, I had a few fight scenes in the movie and then I have, um, an acting scene in a car. As oh, well. oh, okay. So, so, okay. So with this one, you're, you're stunt acting and acting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was that, how is that for you? Because there's, you know, uh, that's a, that's a, that's a bit of a different situation there. Cause you're not only lifting, doing the heavy lifting. Did you say you mm-hmm. had a stunt actor for you? No, no, no. I was, his, you were the stunt, the stunt actor. actor. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So mm-hmm. you have a lot of heavy lifting. Like you're not only doing the stunts, you're also carrying the narrative through acting. Um, mm-hmm. How did it feel to be, to be acting on camera on, on something like that? Mm-hmm. Oh, I love it. <laughs> nice. Nice. I love it. I've done a lot of acting, so it's, I, I, I love when I can mix it. That's, that's my favorite to be honest, because I get to be actually, you know, showing the emotions, not just screaming and, you know, punching yeah. and stuff, but <laughs> yeah. actually saying some lines and um, adding to the story mm-hmm. and also doing the fun act, you know, action. So that that's, yeah, I, I love that stuff. Cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, so I wanted to go back to the idea of, like psychology basically Mm -hmm. and you know you meet like you hear about actors that have stage fright like even great actors like Laurence Olivier being scared Mm -hmm. right I heard about Daniel Craig uh doing stunts for 007 but also being like terrified of heights and I was wondering like you as a stunt performer or performer we can go either direction with acting or stunt acting do you have any fears and we'll start with stunt acting is there anything you're that just scares you yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm every single time I'm terrified. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm, yeah, no, it, it is scary to be under pressure. It is scary when people expect you to be perfect and deliver mm. as of take one. Yeah. Um, and so you're scared more of the reputation of it. it sounds reputa- like you're more- well, yeah, performance of it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Being a performer. Yeah. And obviously coming down to stunts, I am scared of water. I do not, I'm not a fan. (laughs) Swimming (laughs) pools, okay. Ocean and sea, (laughs) mm, questionable. Um, It's certainly cold. I'm not good with cold. And Mm -hmm. heights, I had to do stunts as well, like where I had to jump from a height. That was just, my knees were just shaking. I was like, (laughs) (laughs) you can do this, but also (laughs) you can't show it. Yeah, because obviously you're not gonna get hired. <laughs> yeah, you know the, the next time, so you just you gotta act confident and also not injure yourself. <laughs> so yep. you gotta yep. be in the moment, uh, present, and um, yeah. So that that's been, and then also like the wire pools and when I did not, especially when I just started and I didn't have a lot of experience, I didn't know how it's gonna feel you know, I just, I was terrified. Now I'm, I'm way better. Obviously if there's something, the wire stunt is something crazy, then I'll, you know, just kind of, okay, let's do it a few times. Then I'll, I'll get my confidence back. Mm. But when I was just starting out, oh my God, the fear in my eyes, <laughs> was, it was intense. It was intense. <laughs> well, even the name ratchet, you 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 said it's like a, it's called ratchet pulls. That mm-hmm. even sounds violent. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Some of them are fine. Some of them are, yeah, they certainly feel very violent. <laughs> well, I saw, I saw your demo, your stunt demo, and mm-hmm. uh, there are some wire pulls and you're doing flips. You're doing all types of stuff. You're, you're kicking mm-hmm. ass, you're doing flips, you're doing all this stuff. And I would see, you know, stunt actors getting wire pulled and I would just think, oh, that looks nice and supportive, but it's, it's not like that. I guess if there's an explosion and you fly back, that's like whiplash like you have to like not get whiplash and you have to sell it so you're like throwing your body yeah, back yeah yeah wow. you certainly get whiplash that's part of the job yeah i guess there aren't really a lot of uh old old stunt performers like you know what i mean like it's almost like a sport like is there any stunt performer out there who's like i'm 80 years old and like no you know? i think the oldest one i know is 65 66 
Um, and they're just, just a handful of them who are still performer. And most of them just transition into car stunts because it is a bit, yeah, it is a bit more safe because, you know, you're in a box and if yeah. you know how to do it, it is safe. Obviously, mm. if you don't, then it is not safe at all. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if you know what you're doing, then for sure, yeah. Most of some performers end up either coordinating or transitioning into stunts, uh, mm. car car stunts. So, yeah. Okay. Well, if you were thinking about your next step in a career, mm-hmm. is there a talent or a skill is there something in you that you feel you're not sort of showing the world that you would love to like express more? Hmm. Good question. For stunts, you mean? Or it could be either or. I was thinking outside of the stunt. Like for me recently, I started um, making music, uh, mostly during COVID, oh. and putting it out. And I'm not a great singer, but I like I like play mm-hmm. guitar. I make beats and stuff. So I was like, every idea I've had musically i'm gonna like put out there so i don't have it in here in my head anymore um and it's sort of like these little seeds these little buddings of almost identity coming out because it was like i was never really a music guy publicly Mm -hmm. but i was always like a bedroom musician yeah so for me that's like that's something that i'm kind of starting to move into it's kind of cool it's kind of new territory um Mm -hmm. i was wondering is there is there something in your mind or are you more let's just see where the universe takes me i actually also started taking singing classes and yeah so (laughs) it's interesting you said that um (laughs) yeah so that that's been my passion for the past year and a half and i i don't have any recordings of myself (laughs) uh like singing and stuff i'm still terrified of showing that i'm very bad singer (laughs) So, oh, you're, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm decent. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm like, eh, okay, okay. All right, all right. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's a skill just like any other. You can actually totally. learn how to sing. Obviously, you're not going to be a, you know, a DP of or whatever, but um, yeah. you can certainly learn how to sing well and how to match notes and yeah, yeah. pitch and tone. That I can do. I can match notes, mm-hmm. but I sound... I don't have like a strength like that matches my body. It's more like it's kind of like held back. So I got to kind of open it up. And yeah, but uh, what kind of what kind of music are you singing or what, what are you interested in? I love jazz. Ah. And um, Edith Piaf was that is she jazz? She's French, right? She's an old. Yeah, French she's singer. French. Yeah. But but there are like a bunch of other uh, yeah. jazz stuff. Who, who's a who's a good singer you dig? Yeah, I'm curious. Oh, I'm the worst person to ask. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you hear the music, you dig it. I know she knows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not into names. I think most people are like that with jazz. We're yeah. like, I like jazz, but it's like, who is that? I'm like, I don't know. He's from the forties. He smokes he, a lot. He's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he did heroin. He's cool. He's cool. He's cool. He's uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And yeah. I like a lot of um, musical stuff. Ah, yeah. I'm not a, mm-hmm. I'm not too up on the musicals. I respect it though. That takes mm-hmm. a lot of skill, especially. Mm-hmm. It's a skill. And, and that's yeah. why I like it because it's a skill. I don't mm-hmm. necessarily listen to it. I don't listen to it at all, but I just yeah. like singing it and I like practicing. Yeah. Um, with those songs. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Do you um maybe maybe writing? Would you ever consider writing a book at the end of your career? Because you in your relatively young career with stunts, you're doing a whole bunch of work, um, mm-hmm. coming to a, a brand new country, pro figure skater, model, flips into this world. Um, mm-hmm. Husband is also in the same, I think he's he's in the same industry, right? Yeah, he does stunts. Yeah, he's been yeah. doing stunts longer than me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, I don't want to get to this. You have a pet pig. And I just, I, I heard about this. Two I saw this on Instagram. Pigs. You have two pet pigs? Yeah. <laughs> A boy and a how girl, did, yeah. How did how did that come how did that come to be? <laughs> well, um, so um, little that I knew that um, my husband at that time was my boyfriend was very mm-hmm. impulsive. So I was a friend of mine showed me some videos on YouTube with these mini pigs, and we <laughs> did not know that mini pigs are a myth; they don't exist. Oh, and mini pigs are just babies who <laughs> grow to be pigs. 
Mm-hmm. And um, so I showed it to my husband. And at that time, we just had one dog. Yeah. Um, and uh, we were going to get a second one, just kind of like figuring it out. And I showed him the videos and I was like, oh, look, this is so cute. He's like, oh, my God, so cute. Oh, look at them running. Oh, look at them. They're so cute. Look at those <laughs> little noses. And then two months later, I come home, him opening the door and he's like, please don't yell at me. I'm like, what did you do? He's like, just don't freak out. I'm like, Alex, I just, what did you do? <laughs> yeah. And he opens the door and it was right before Christmas. I think it was the 22nd of December. Nice. So we had this big Christmas tree at home and there's a box with a pig inside. Oh my God. So, <laughs> yeah. so that's how we got our pig number one. His name is Francois. Francois, and uh, he rescued him from a place in Caledon because we lived in Toronto at that time. So from a place in Caledon, and um, like he was, was going to become like a pork chop kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And um, so these people were trying to get rid of him. If they don't, then they were going to send him to the factory. And mm. um, yeah, he was about five months old. But I think he was older. They were starving him. He was just skinny. You can see his bones. Like it was was very sad to see because they were trying to keep him smaller and they were trying to, you know, be like, oh, it's a mini pig, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like it's a mini pig. But he kept growing. So, but the thing is just like with humans, if you don't feed them properly, they're going to have vitamin deficiency. So the bones aren't going to grow as much. So they just started starving him. And, uh, and then Alex came and saved him. Oh, and that's beautiful. I was that's a little great. mad. I was a little <laughs> mad <laughs> because we lived in the city. We lived in uh, East York. So that was, that was not maybe the best decision. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, it was regardless in the end of the day, it was awesome. How big, how big is he now? How big is the he is, big He's actually not that big. He's maybe a size of like a American bulldog. So he's oh, cool. about 17 inches tall, 17, yeah, yeah. 18 inches tall and uh, 32 inches long. Oh, cool. Like from his nose. Weigh? to um, He weighs a lot. He's 170 pounds. Oh, what it's a just good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. He's a Vietnamese pod belly. So they get a big belly and a big chin. Oh, that's and, awesome. Um, yeah. He's awesome. He is. Uh, he changed our life. Does he have backyard space? My girl and I just got yeah. a husky and we're in a condo, but we bring him to the cottage. We bring him to the fields. Yeah. We run that boy. You have to. Yeah. You got to. Because you, you have to. Crazy. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm lucky to hear. I'm happy to hear that. You yeah. Are, no, a lot no. Of people we, we abuse always, their animals. No, yes. no. We run this guy. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So where's the, so where's he hanging out? Does so have- with him, when we were in East York is we had just the first floor in a house, like those semi-attached houses so there was no backyard but we didn't really know how to take care of the pig because both of us are city people so we're just like farm animal what do you do (laughs) so we ended up obviously we got kind of lots of nasty comments from people and you know people are just not the nicest species on this planet so we had to move uh, to a place with a backyard and then when we decided to move to vancouver we also just looked for a house with a backyard. So he does have a backyard and we also take him for walks around the neighborhood. And people oh, that must here be are very so nice. Cute. Is he nice to <laughs> so. kids? Is he friendly? Oh yeah, yeah. He just oh, freezes. He so just lets awesome. them pet you and he he just yeah. He's does wanted. he um is it like a dog? Like does he have similarities? It is better than a dog personally. Really? If, wow. You know, cuz whenever my dogs pass away, I don't think I'm going to get another dog because yeah. I, I love them to pieces, but they're just a lot of work. Pigs are not. They are very intelligent, which in the beginning, I would say like the first year was intense just because also we were not educated how to take care of them. So it took some time to figure him out. And they're very smart. He learned how to open the fridge. He opened oh. how to open all the cu- cupboards. He They memorize patterns easily. Yeah. And when I say that, within two days, they'll just memorize a pattern. Not like dogs when they need a few months to memorize something. 
Yeah. So he knew everything. He knew where he had to go pee. He knows where to go poo. Pigs are actually super clean. They don't smell. And they, even when they, you know, during summer, if you spray them with water, because they don't sweat, so you have to cool them down. Oh, so okay. when you sp- spray them with water, they go roll in the mud. Literally five minutes later, they just shake it off and they're perfectly clean. Oh, cool. And um, I know they're just awesome. They're just great companions. They, they feel you on, you know, emotional level. They, they know when you're sad. They know when you're happy. They just... They just react so well and know how to adjust to your mood as well. And, oh, wow. and they're super affectionate. We got a little girl for our, for Francois. We got Amélie. Both oh. of them are French pigs. And uh, we made them French. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we got Amélie a year and a half ago for him because, yeah. you know, everybody needs a pair. And he, everybody needs to sleep with someone <laughs> to cuddle at night. Yeah. And um, so we got her and they're just, it's the cutest thing. They fight just like people. They, they <laughs> make up just like people. They kiss and they hug. They, oh my they, God. It's, it's the play. Like it's the best thing. Do they have an Instagram? No, I, I only post on my Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. Well, I mean, and you're so busy too. Like you're yeah, so yeah. busy. Did that change how you feel about, I eat meat, but like, did that change how you feel about eating meat when you had pigs? Yeah, for me, it did. Um, I stopped when we got Francois because I was still eating pork. And I it took me a month and a half to completely cut it out. Yeah. Because um, it is hard. I think a lot yeah. of, you know, the way we are raised for, you know, dairy products, meat and all that. It is, it comes from our childhood. And because, you know, from back, in the day people just did not have access to a lot of things so that was just easy and it does become a habit because you're raised in it and i'm ukrainian so for us pork is you know that's all we eat really and because it's cheap meat and it's so easy to raise a pig in terms of they do have a a black hole in their stomach and you know (laughs) they they can get big um so It was kind of like breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. It was all meat, meat, meat. So it was a lot of it was psychological uh, to just stop and find other alternatives. But it was. Are you vegetarian? Are you full vegetarian? I'm pescatarian. So I I eat fish. I eat fish. And sometimes I eat cheese as well. And um, yeah, so, but it, it is a journey. It is really difficult. And I'm one of those people who was ha- having dreams about meat. Like that's how bad it oh, was. Man. Like, and I know, yeah, I know. beef, beef, pork actually was fairly easy to give up. Like it, it took a month and a half for beef. Oh man. Like it took me <laughs> like solid five years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, my God. I've been on this journey for a long time and it's, it's been really difficult, especially when you smell it, when you see it, like I was having dreams about it. Like it was bad. It's, yeah. it's really difficult. And then your body just starts craving and, and you just, you know, it's, it's difficult. It's not easy. Dairy products was easy. Eggs, eggs was easy as well, but yeah, just beef was just something. It was something. <laughs> it took time. And honestly, in the end of the day, I knew it was here. It was nothing to do with my health because my blood work actually got better and my skin got better. My, mm-hmm. it's just, just a lot of things. My nails, my hair got better. So it was nothing wow. to do with my health. It was just, I knew it was just here. It was just mental. It was all mental. I like that. Mm-hmm. That's kind of been like a throw line for the episode. And, and I kind of anticipated it would be because I think mm-hmm. your industry, for example, deals with overcoming fears. And I yeah. think it's really cool to see that for you, it all comes back to like, self-talk like how you frame the situation um how you deal with pressure and uh yeah it's tremendous to see and and even just again like just looking at your imdb and all these you're doing a lot of brave stuff here and it's a big long list of being Mm -hmm. brave so um uh it just goes to show it's it served you really well i think and it's uh it was great to talk with you and it's it's been exciting and fun and uh, we're going to, we're going to wrap up because we're actually, we're exactly at six, six o'clock and I, I got to run to this dinner thing, mm-hmm. but uh, Margarita, this is amazing. 
This is amazing. I'm so glad that you've made the time. And um, is there anything you want to leave us with a thought or is there a project coming out or anything? Yeah, I think just uh, as we were saying, I think challenging yourself is very important for self growth. Hmm. And overcoming your fears, overcoming certain perceptions that you had as a kid, as an adult, um, I think it, it is very important for everyone's growth and just being open to um, just being open to life and different, whatever life throws at you and also being open to alternatives and not being just so stuck in one way of living or doing things or making money, whatever it is. And yeah, I think challenge, challenge yourself, even when it's difficult, even when you don't want to just work through your insecurities, work through your fears, work through your beliefs. And yeah, I think that's, that's, that's that. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Well, again, uh, thank you so much. All right, that's the episode. I want to thank Margarita for coming through. And if you enjoyed this talk and you want to follow up more on her, follow her on IG at msoldatova. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. See you next time.